The Alberta NDP has proposed legislation that amounts to a socialist attack on the family farm and the rural way of life. The legislation requires farms, regardless of size, to meet mandatory occupational health and safety requirements, including mandatory inspections. It also requires farms to extend workers' compensation board coverage to all workers, paid or unpaid. Farms now will have to meet mandatory child labor laws and meet overtime and hours of work requirements. It also allows for the unionization of farm workers, paid or unpaid. That might all seem sort of good for city folks. I mean, everyone wants a safer workplace, farmers included. But this is bad legislation that doesn't understand the farm way of life. And this will cripple family farms. Well, how can I be so sure? Well, my family farm is right over there. Farmers won't be able to teach their kids or their grandkids about farming and hard work anymore. The extension of child labor laws to family farms makes it illegal now for a 10 year old to earn money picking eggs for their grandma or feeding lambs for their grandpa. Those are the best moments of a farm kid's life. And those are being taken away by urban leftist meddlers. And it makes farm kids ill prepared to take over the operations of the family farm one day. Everything kids do on a farm is training for that big day, that day when they're past the keys to the big tractor. And how many farmers will be willing to take out WCB coverage on their neighbor when their neighbor comes over to help string up some barbed wire? Because this new legislation explicitly states it covers unpaid work. This legislation stamps out the very best part of rural life, being neighborly and community volunteerism. And for the farmers that don't take out WCB coverage on their neighbors and their grandkids, well, they can be shut down by a random inspection from an occupational health and safety bureaucrat. Who feeds the cows and who bales up the hay when the government bureaucrat shuts down your farming operation? Do they bring in an overpaid government worker to do it for you and then send you the bill at the end of the day? And what happens if rain is coming tomorrow and your barley is still laying in the field? Can you combine all night long anymore with your brother-in-law to beat the weather back to the granary? Well, no. That's unsafe now and you have to lose your crops to both the weather and a government pencil pusher. And let's go back to those child labor laws and the WCB requirements on unpaid work for a second. Don't anyone try to tell me that's not a targeted attack on the Hutterites. They're a religious order like the Mennonites that live on colonies across Alberta. They all work collectively, men, women and children, to feed and grow their farming operations. It's not unusual to see children working in the market garden after school on the colony. This attacks their way of life. Hutterites came here to the prairies to escape government persecution. If a conservative had written this law, the left would call it bigoted targeted legislation. But here's the real reason I think the NDP are doing this, the unions. This grows the unions and that's really who the NDP govern for, isn't it? Allowing farm workers to unionize grows the NDP union base by a potential 60,000 workers over 40,000 farms and ranches across Alberta. And there's more. How many extra unionized government employees will be needed to handle at least 40,000 WCB files? What about all the occupational health and safety inspectors? The government will need to hire many more just to pop in on those 40,000 farms. The Alberta Union of Provincial Employees must be rubbing their greedy hands together right now. Large farms may be able to handle all the extra administration costs and all the union pay, but small farms just can't or won't. Landowning peasants in Stalin's Russia were called kulaks. They were painted as greedy for resisting forced collectivization of their farms. In Alberta, we're all kulaks now. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed.